Well, what are you waiting for? Take the pins out of your hair? <laughs> Give everything a good zhuzh, cause it's time to get fancy. Today we pick up somewhere I left off quite a while ago. We are going to film an updated video to my perfume collection video. The first part of this video was released three years ago. Gross. And in that video, 2018 Pisa took you on an illustrious tour of the various fragrances that make up my probably too large but very near and dear to my heart perfume collection. And today that collection has both shrunk and grown since the first installment of this video, so I thought it was high time to take you through it again. We begin with the minis and samples and then we will work our way up to the big bottles. Cominciamo con qualcosa italiana. Luna Rosa de Prada. This is actually not one I think I've smelled before. I don't think I've had this very long. There we go. Oh, she's spicy. This is orange essence, lavender absolu, clary sage. That's where the sort of impact of it is coming from. Spearmint, nana, -na. ambroxan, which sounds like an antidepressant. Love that. Ambrette absolu, and its style is dynamic, sportive. <laughs> and energetic. This smells like a men's fragrance. Is this for men? Oh, but you know what? That's a good one. This is, hey. This smells like what I hope professional athletes smell like. It's like old spice, but elevated. Next up, we have one of two Jo Malone fragrance samples. This one is Nectarine Blossom and Honey Cologne. Oh, this is weird. It's triggering my scent memory, but I don't know to when. I feel like I'm in quantum leap right now. I wonder if I had like a teacher who smelled like this at some point. I don't like it very much, actually. I will admit, although I do save my samples, I'm not great at actually using them. Inspired by London's Covent Garden early morning market, this fragrance combines succulent notes of nectarine, peach, and cassis with delicate spring flowers that melt into a note of acacia honey. It's actually kind of nice when I don't like my samples because then it means that's one less $70 full-size bottle of perfume that my silly, silly little brain wants to purchase. The other Jo Malone fragrance is Wood Sage and Sea Salt, which is a larger sample that I actually do wear because this was like a 250 point perk or some such. I love when you first spray a perfume onto a little card and all you get is alcohol, serving very much blood test. This is a fresh fragrance, which I really like having a couple fresh fragrances peppered into all my other ones. I gravitate towards very heavy, sweet, gourmand fragrances or really strict florals, like classic Dior, Diorissimo type of floral perfume. And so it's nice to have something that just kind of smells like plants. Ambrette seeds, sea salt, sage. Yeah. Speaking of the sweet ones, next up is classic Chloe. I used to have Roses de Chloe, which is Chloe's rose perfume, obviously, but I've since finished it up. Oh my God, is it not actually in a spray? There we go. Sorry. I find it so interesting that Chloe and Roses de Chloe are different perfumes because Chloe, this one smells so rosy. It's a little, it's giving a little bit Turkish delight. Chloe and its notes. Powdery florals, peony, rose, honey, and cedarwood. What a gorgeous perfume. Chloe, the label. If you ever wanna find a YouTuber to represent your brand like Louis Vuitton did with Emma Chamberlain, Bonjour. By the way, don't worry about the waste of paper here. This is one half of one sheet of watercolor paper that had some sketching on it that didn't work out. Oh, next up we have a classic. This is Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb, which feels like the perfume of college girls in, I wanna say like 2011. I didn't wear a Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb, but I knew girls whose older sisters wore it to the parties at like UMass Amherst when they were freshmen. Jesus Christ. Mm. <laughs> this one is so sweet, it's almost cough syrupy. I would have loved this when I was 19 though, let me tell you that. This is horrible. <laughs> this is like headache sweet. I need like sexy sweet. I need like rich, you know? Jasmine orange blossom patchouli. That orange blossom and jasmine are working overtime. No, thank you. Oh my God. This is a Tory Burch perfume, but I don't know which one. Tory Burch Eau de Parfum. Oh, it's just the Tory Burch perfume. Thank you. I do wear this one sometimes, even though I hate perfume roller balls. I don't like the sensory feeling of roller balls as a perfume application technique, because I like to spray perfume too much. Girl, why does this smell like pencils, huh? 
excuse me. Remember when Tory Burch shoes all of a sudden, like overnight, were a must have item in like 2012? It was Tory Burch flats and Longchamp bags. I remember I had neither and I was like, I hate those. I think those are so ugly. I hate when girls wear them. And then at night I was like, God, please let my mom read my mind and know that I want a Longchamp bag for Christmas. I was such a hater when I was a teenager. Oh my God. Okay, Tory Burch signature, classic floral neroli, peony and vetiver. You know what? That's the pencil. It's not bitter, but it's not a sweet note and fragrance. Little salad-esque, little salady. I wear this on occasion. When I want a fresher scent, this is one of the other ones I go towards, is the signature Tory Burch. I don't think I would buy it in a full size though. However, one that I would buy in a full size, Versace. Dylan Blue. I don't have to swatch this one. It's very fresh in here because I was wearing it yesterday. Look at that. Royal Blue, gorgeous. Earthy greens and herbs. A uh, Girl, let me tell you. Aquatic notes, patchouli, bergamot. That's why I like it. What's this? Tom Ford Oud Wood. Girl, I don't even know what this smells like. Speaking of Tom Ford, I didn't know Tom Ford was a movie director and I just watched Nocturnal Animals for the first time. Very stylish film. I don't love it, but I don't, I didn't hate it either. I wrote, whoa, girl, I'm holding this a foot away from my face and that hit me like a slap to the cheekbone. Oh my God. What? Is this for men? Allegedly. Rare oud wood, sandalwood, Chinese pepper. There are a couple scent notes that always hit me like a ton of bricks. Two of them are sandalwood and Gardenia. And we'll get to Gardenia in a quick second. Why do I have this? Oh, this is gross. Sorry if you like this. Oh, this is described as a unisex and genderless scent. I wouldn't call this a genderless scent, but I would call it a personless scent and that I don't think any people should be wearing it. Okay, you're not going back in the bone china bowl. You're going somewhere else. Those are all the little samples. Now we get to the middle evolution samples, the, the Venusaur samples. I'm already getting a headache. This is Voce Viva from Valentino. This was, I think, a 250 point perk at Sephora. Here's the thing about this one. Very sweet. Scent described as warm floral. I think it's kind of a fruity floral. I wouldn't call it standard floral, like not like one of the ones we'll get to later, which is one of my favorite florals I've ever had, but that's one of the big bottles. Keynotes are Italian bergamot, orange blossom absolute, and crystal moss accord. Don't know what that is. Girl, not people named crystal moss, the ingredients. Uh. Oh, it's moss. It's like an actual moss. Well, okay. The scent now reminds me of like a very emotionally tumultuous time in my life. And the unfortunate power of scent memory means that I cannot <laughs> divorce that from the scent. Yeah, no. I'm gonna see if my roommate wants this. Next, we have Romance from Ralph Lauren. I love this bottle. Oh my God. Note family is lily, white floral, and musk. Girl, that is fresh. That's elegant. Cause it's not just fresh. There is a little bit of the sweetness in there from the musk, but it's a very fresh floral because of the lily. That's delightful. A women's fragrance with sparkling top notes of pink pepper and mandarin orange atop the floral perfumes of rose and jasmine. A sensual touch of woody musk and patchouli ground the feminine fragrance, creating a balanced warm floral perfume for women. Thank you, Ralph. We might be going plain emoji full size for that one. That in the spring, girl, stop. That's a very like 32 year old perfume. When I'm a little bit more established, like when I figure out what a Roth IRA is in like, I don't know, four years, it's happening. I told you we'd be coming back to Gardenia. This is the Gardenia perfume of Gardenia perfumes. Torrance by Floca. Tocca Florence. Here's the thing about me, I hate the smell of gardenia. I hate the smell of gardenia. I do dislike this perfume. Here's why I have it. I lived in Florence for my junior year of college. It's one of my favorite places in the world. And you might be thinking, okay, but like what's the point of it being called Florence if the scent of it doesn't remind you of the city at all and in fact you don't like the scent? I didn't ask you to come in here and make a bunch of scents at me. Maybe it'll grow on me. Here's the thing about it. When I was in high school, a friend of mine gave me a Bath and Body Works body splash called Butterfly Flower, and I loved it. I thought it was so different from all my other little body splash perfume juice bar bullshittery that I had as my fragrance collection. And what I didn't realize about Butterfly Flower until a couple years ago when I started to gain an understanding of how uh, fragrance notes worked is that it was a gardenia scented perfume. 
it was a body splash and therefore not necessarily as heavy as an eau de parfum, but it was gardenia. And so I feel like I should be able to vibe with Toca Florence if I was able to vibe with Bada Bada Glamour. Oh, Jesus Christ. We've made it through the wilderness of the samples. Now let's get to something a little ridiculous. This perfume is Cat Deluxe by Naomi Campbell. Got a little pom-pom on it. You know, for scent reasons. This is a very sweet perfume that makes my head hurt. <laughs> I keep it because I think it is very silly. I never ever wear it, and in fact, I'm not looking forward to smelling it. Top notes are cardamom and freesia, which is probably why it's so sweet and headache inducing. Middle notes are peach, violet, and peony. Base notes are vanilla, musk, patchouli, woodsy notes, and amber. Naomi, that's too many. That is why this makes my head hurt. It's got too many goddamn ingredients that are all fighting for dominance. I'm holding this so far away from my entire body. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name of the kingdom come, that will be done. Ow. It reminds me a lot of the Victor No flower bomb. It's not a heavy scent. Like, it's not one of those, like, warming gourmand scents. It's not like a YSL black opium or something. I wore this a lot in the winter of 2019 and didn't get why my head hurt all the time, and it's because I was walking around smelling this all day. Speaking of sweet, sweet, sweet perfumes, I am very pleased to introduce you to this newer acquisition of mine. This is Viva La Juicy from Juicy Couture. I feel so powerful holding this in my hand. This was a friend's older sister perfume. I was wearing Malibu Style from Mary Kate and Ashley, which for people who have seen the first perfume collection video, yes, I still have, and yes, I still wear it. I didn't have Viva La Juicy. I was very intimidated by girls who did. I already know what this smells like because I wear this a lot. Bitch, this is so good. <laughs> Top notes are wild berries and mandarin orange. Middle notes are honeysuckle, gardenia, and jasmine. Base notes are caramel, praline, vanilla, amber, and sandalwood. Now, isn't that a testament to her power? She has gardenia and sandalwood, and I don't ever get headaches from this. I may be forced to live according to linear time, but I'm damn sure not respecting it. Let's talk about mists, baby. Let's talk about one, two, three. Let's talk about getting spritzy with Pacifica. I really like the Pacifica perfumed hair and body mists. I have three of them. This one is called French Lilac. I used to live near a lilac bush when I was a kid and I would always go buy it and smell it with my mom because lilacs are her favorite flower. This is a really scary, accurate representation of lilac. I don't know how they did it and I'm scared. I feel like there's some sort of gene sequencing going on at Pacifica that we should be more worried about as a nation, but I'm gonna let it keep happening. This one is Indian coconut nectar, which I mostly use in my hair. It's like a very, very sweet coconut scent. And I feel like on my body, it's just a little bit too much. That's a heavy sweet. That's not a light headachey sweet. That's like a like sexy romantic sweet. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I should wear this in my body more. This is like, girl. If you're going on a date and you just wanna be treated like a little pina colada, you wanna be a little, a little mounds bar with coconut, Get this one, Pacifica Indian Coconut Nectar. This is my favorite one. This is Island Vanilla from Pacifica. This smells like an expensive bakery. <laughs> Lemon bars and chocolate, oh my God. Pacifica also makes an actual perfume of this scent in particular, and I haven't ever felt the need to buy it because the scent lasting power on these body splashes is unbelievable. I have perused the other scents in this line. I'm not wild about any of them, but these three, these are my girls. This coconut one, this is the newest one to me, and apparently we have more getting acquainted to do. Love these, oh my God. It's time now to talk about imposters, designer imposter fragrances. Specifically, the it makes perfect sense designer imposter perfumes that you can get at CVS. I have two and they're both Incredible. <laughs> this one is inspired by YSL's Opium, and this one is inspired by <laughs> Jennifer Lopez's JLo Glow. My roommate has this one, and she was wearing it one day, and I really liked how she smelled, and so I bought it. Opium is a wild scent. It reminds me a little bit of um, Coco Chanel. Dusty, sort of austere, grandmotherly type scents. It's great for the winter. I wear it when I want to smell important. It makes me feel like a lady. I feel like I'm giving Dame Maggie Smith 
I'm giving Olivia Coleman, you know, like I'm <laughs> tangerine, plum, cloves, coriander, carnation, lily of the valley, rose, myrrh, a poppinax, castorium, cedarwood, sandalwood. Girl, I don't even know what some of those things were. That's the whole apothecary in a bottle. This is an intense smell. And this particular like designer imposter one lasts hours. It's ridiculous. Now the JLo Glow one. JLo Glow was a perfume that I wore heavily when I was in eighth grade. My grandmother gave me a body lotion and perfume and body splash gift set of it for Christmas. I thought I smelled sexy. I thought I smelled cool and suave. I would wear it on days that I knew I had math class with my crush. Justin, like, do you, do you need help graphing that polynomial? Literally. <laughs> this is how strong the scent memory is. My favorite album when I was in eighth grade was We Sing, We Dance, We Steal Things by Jason Mraz. Don't ask me why, I'm Yours was a big hit and I loved the rest of the album. Actually, I'm not gonna act like it's cringy. That's a great album. I love Jason Mraz. The song Butterfly, girl, sexual awakening. Sorry, but like 14 year old me did not need to be listening to that song at that time. I love that song. That's a great album. Anyway, when I smell this, the image of the album cover pops into my head like a reflex. Top notes are neroli, orange blossom, and grapefruit. Middle notes are jasmine, rose, and tube rose. Base notes are musk, sandalwood, orris root, vanilla, and amber. Definitely getting the orange blossom and the sandalwood and the grapefruit. It's a very citrusy smell, but the sandalwood kind of grounds it. What a wild, ugh. What a, what a time in my life. <laughs> While we're living in the past, let's go a little bit deeper. This is Sunflowers by Elizabeth Arden. My grandmother gave it to me in the winter of 2007 when I was in eighth grade as a congratulations present for an art exhibition that I was in. When I smell it, I can like picture looking out of like the cold window of my mom's car. I got this to TJ Maxx a couple months ago because I knew it was a nostalgic scent for me and it totally is and the memory still is so strong in my head. Top notes, melon, peach, orange blossom, lemon, mandarin orange, bergamot, Ding, 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 and Brazilian rosewood. Sorry, I realized my white balance was bananas. I was looking orange like I was in a Jason Statham movie. I apologize. This perfume makes me think of just the happy parts of being in middle school. I love this perfume. I wore this all the time this spring and summer. This was the perfume I wore when I got vaccinated. Ah. <gasps> Oh my God, new memories being made. <laughs> this is Grapefruit Lime from The Seven Virtues. Their other perfume, Vanilla Woods, is very popular, but I don't think I've heard people talk very much about Grapefruit Lime, which sucks because in addition to having sick packaging, like I love how this looks. This is one of the coolest fresh perfumes I've ever smelled. Let's talk about notes, baby. They put the notes on the label in the bottle, style points for style. Sweetie grapefruit, lime, and basil essential oils. There's a lot of basil in here. The basil comes through very strongly. Avec huile essentielle de pamplemousse, sweetie, de lime et de basilic. Wearing this kind of makes me smell like a salad in a very good way. The rest of the notes are as follows. So lime, grapefruit, petit grain, lemon, basil, and orange. Middle notes, green tea, bamboo, cumin, lily of the valley, neroli, and juniper. And base notes are cedar, sandalwood, moss, and amber. Wow, I'm actually very surprised there's no vetiver in this. It's so green. I really like having at least a couple perfumes that are just not sweet at all for days that I'm not feeling sweet. Every so often, I like to just get real zesty. <laughs> my rare this smells like the produce section of a really upscale grocery store. All right, let's talk about rose perfumes, Bestie. We talked earlier about how I used to wear Roses de Chloé and I have since abandoned it for two different perfumes. One of them, I don't know if you can get anymore. It is Rejuvenating Rose from Bonnier de Saint. And the other one you can absolutely still get. It's You from Glossier. So I love Panier de Saint. I go on their website all the time to see if this perfume is back and I've not found it there since I got it like two years ago, which sucks a lot because it's really good. First, it comes in this very sleek, slender, attractive glass bottle. This is gonna be your standard rose, capital R Times New Roman rose. You're in a rose garden eating Turkish delight Fuck you, Rose. That's what this smells like, which you gotta love it. You gotta love it. I don't even know if this has other scent notes. I wore this last night. I went to a party and I wore this perfume. 
and the whole night I smelled like a beautiful little flower. If you can still buy this rejuvenating rose, Bonnier des Sons, wonderful. I'm probably the 87th person to tell you to buy Glossier U. I know you don't want it to smell good. You don't want to like it. I understand. Doesn't change the fact that it is one of my favorite perfumes. This is the one I travel with because it's a really like easy, compact bottle. No shit. Okay, um, it's just come to my attention that there is actually no rose in Glossier U. It's pink pepper, iris, and Brett seeds and ambrox. I think it smells like roses. Do I not know what irises smell like? That's embarrassing. Anyway, I think it does. Maybe I'm just getting tricked by the packaging. <laughs> I do love how this smells though. It's elegant. It's simple, it's not overpowering. It has impressive duration in my opinion. I love it. I wear this perfume like once a week at least. We get to two of my sexier perfumes now. First up we have Cartier La Panthère, which is one of my favorite bottles. It's hard to tell, but there's a little panther face in the glass. Look at her. Top notes are dried fruits, rhubarb, big strawberry. Anise and bergamot. Middle notes are gardenia, rose, ylang ylang, orange blossom and pear. Base notes are oak moss, musk, leather, and patchouli. This I got on Depop like two years ago and I've barely made a dent in it. It was like barely used. This is a very complex perfume, I feel. You don't wear this perfume lightly. This perfume also reminds me of Coco Chanel but I like it better. That scene in that episode of SpongeBob where he and Patrick have to escape the Flying Dutchman's ship through the perfume department. That's what this smells like. That is what Cartier La Panthère is giving. Aggressive perfume. This is one of those perfumes that you do a single spritz of and then you like, I will admit, I'm very excessive with the way that I spritz my perfume because I'll do the wrist one, but I'll do a separate one for like the back of my neck and I'll spray it into my clothes and I'll walk into it. No, if you do that with this, you're going to commit biological warfare on people. This duration is bananas. Like this girl doesn't come to play. God, I love looking at it. Next up is one of my favorite perfumes ever. This one we got a preview of in the original perfume collection video when I had a sample of it, and I've since purchased the full size. This is the scent Moab from the brand Fleur. Aw, she's all grown up now, I have the big one. Putting aside the actual scent, this is some of my favorite packaging of any perfume. The name of the brand going around in this beautiful silver lettering, and then on the front, we have the name of the scent itself, right? And then we have this like, metallic weighted cap and this beautiful, it's gorgeous. Moab smells like the liqueur Campari. It's very bitter, it's kind of like a bitter orange. Long pepper, clove, vanilla, jasmine, and tonka bean. This is a very sexy, elegant, heavy, sweet, like it is. This is a hot, this, like this, not to put too fine a point on it, but like, this is a perfume that you wear to, um, like if you got like social engagements with people. I wear it a lot. Like I don't save it for special occasions. Like I wear it when I'm just like going on, going out shopping or whatever. But like, mm, it's so good. You might be wondering, what perfumes have you left to the end? Is it any surprise? Come on, it's the Nest ones. It's Nest, like obviously. I have bought three additional Nest perfumes since the first perfume collection video. But you know what? It's not that excessive because that video is from three years ago. So it's one perfume a year and I also got rid of one of the ones I had then. I still have Dolly and Vine. I don't wear it that often because I've been giving my attention to these new babies. I will talk about them in the order that I love them. Some mothers don't have favorite children. I do. First up, we have Wild Poppy. Let's observe the gorgeous bottle. Nest fragrances always have my heart in terms of design. And it's not just that they're beautiful. The scent lasts. It's an incredible product in incredible packaging. Do you know how rare that is in the world of cosmetics? I know editing me hates when I leave in these long pauses of me looking stuff up. Sorry, girl. Oh girl, it's okay. I don't mind that much. You get so mad about it too. Am I really pissing you off right now? Mm. Okay, we didn't need all that. What are you gonna do? I exist in the past. I'm the only version of me that exists right now, you idiot. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. Rose de Glace, Himalayan Jasmine, and Pear. Girl, that pear comes through hardcore. 
This is a very, very fruity, sweet floral. This smells like a more mature version of a Bath and Body Works body splash or a Victoria's Secret body splash. If you love like super sweet perfumes, but you want a perfume that's a little bit more adult, you probably love Wild Poppy. The next one up is my newest perfume to my entire collection. It is the Sun Kissed Hibiscus fragrance. And I have to give some props to my friends Lacey Spooky Lips and Fat Hips and Hannah Smoky Glow because I went to visit them a couple months ago and we were in a Sephora together and I was waffling on whether or not to buy this and they were like, girly, do it. And I was like, you know what? And I don't regret it at all. They changed the spritzers. They're a little smoother now and a little bit of a finer mist, which is very cool. Let me tell you. So remember that whole tirade I went on about the Indian coconut nectar body splash from Pacifica? This is her with a little bit of like a higher leg slit on her skirt, you know what I mean? Oh my God, the fineness of the mist made it so that when I sprayed it on my little thing, it got in my mouth. If I could compare this to any extant perfume, it would be Margella's Replica Beach Walk. Sunkissed Hibiscus smells very similar to it, but has enough like sweet coconut type of vibe to it, that it's not like a very, very beachy perfume the way the Beach Walk is, and I really like that. This actually is one of Nest's newer perfumes. I think it came out last year, and it's also very new to me. He notes, Frangipani, Orange Blossom, Golden Amber, Coconut, Tuberose, Gardenia. This is delicious. This is scrum diddly umptious, and yet, it's not my favorite of the Nest perfumes. That distinction belongs to another. I love fruity perfumes and I love heavy gourmand perfumes. However, my heart still lies with florals and my favorite floral perfume of all time is Wisteria Blue from Nest. First of all, get into this bottle. That artwork is so pretty. Shut up with this dragonfly. Are you joking? Oh my God. I'm gonna throw this across the room. It's, it's so nice. It's like such a beautiful, sweet floral. And the name Wisteria Blue is so pretty. Like Wisteria Blue is like the name that John Green would give to a YA novel protagonist. Oh, that, that's my neighbor, Wisteria Blue. Yeah. I've been in love with her since we were both 10 years old. There's just something about her that's different from other girls. When Wisteria Blue looks at you, it's like she's looking through you. Like she's looking just past you at something you can't even understand. Like she doesn't see you, she sees all your thoughts, all your mixed up insides, your fears, your hopes, and your dreams. Wisteria Blue sees all of them. But at the same time, I feel like she doesn't see me at all. Like that's, that's her. This ethereal floral eau de parfum is created by combining watery notes with the essence of French wisteria, the richness of Bulgarian rose and imperial jasmine. Girl, I'm about to put this on actually. This is the last perfume, so I don't, I don't have to worry about like mixing this with any other scents. You know. I feel like I'm standing in the rain and someone is telling me that they love me most ardently. I I love perfume. It makes me so happy. <laughs> and that is my updated perfume collection. Hopefully it'll be another three or four years <laughs> before I need to make another update to this video because I'm very pleased with my collection right now. I haven't really been looking at many other perfumes because I have kind of everything I want really. But as we all know, uh, I have nothing if not a fickle, capricious heart. And I'm a very weak little lady when it comes to whether or not to open my little purse, so. Who knows what's gonna happen? <laughs> but yes, as it stands right now, mom ain't planning on birthing no more babies.
Thank you so much for watching my video, but before you leave, I'm going to need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day for me, that would smell absolutely amazing. If you would like to interact with me with Twixt Uploads, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or especially TikTok, at Nisi Pisa. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to use code Nisi Pisa for 10% off a checkout at your local bergamot tree dealership. Make your own perfume, and I might want to buy it if it's got that sweet little baby bergamot in it. Mm -mm. Mm, yummy. <laughs> Bye. Mary Kate and Ashley mouth with style. I wore it as a child, I wear it as an adult, and I will wear it as a ghost.